Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. If you want to know how a Muslim should be when it comes to putting on a wedding party or spending towards a wedding party, all you have to do is take a look at what Allah has said in Surah Al-Furqan when he describes the Ibad al-Rahman or the servants of the merciful. That there are those who anfaqu lam yusrifu that when they spend they don't do israf or they're not excessive, walam yaktaru and nor neither are they miserly or stingy. Wakana bayna dalika qawama and they are moderate in between those two extremes, meaning they're neither excessive nor miserly. They find that balance between those two extremes. And in this ayah we see that israf is indeed something which is blameworthy, something which is wrong, but. Israf really differs from person to person, uh, and this depends on their means. Islamically, Israf is actually two things. Either, number one, Israf is to spend your money on something which is haram, or to spend beyond your capabilities. And I'll say that again, either to spend on something which is haram, or to spend beyond your capability. Now, when it comes to weddings, if you're spending on your wedding uh, on something which is haram, then you fall into Israf. Or if you're spending uh, on your wedding beyond your limits, then once again you have fallen into israf. And subhanAllah, there's a lot of wisdom why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden israf or forbidden this excessiveness. For example, excessiveness very easily leads to arrogance, something which is a terrible trait for a Muslim to have. And as the Prophet told us of a, that a person who has even a tiny amount of israf, or sorry, a tiny amount of arrogance will not enter paradise. And subhanAllah, for some people, the wedding actually becomes a competition. Uh, they start competing. Uh, this person spent so much on their wedding. Can I spend more? This person invited 200 people. Can I invite 400? These people had that type of decoration. Can I have better types of decoration? They had this type of food. Can I have better food? And so on and so forth. You see where this is going? And subhanAllah, if you're not careful, it's very easy to fall into this type of israf. And for the groom or whoever is paying for the wedding party, this wedding can easily become a burden. And just like when it comes to the mahar, uh, when spending on the wedding becomes a burden, it leads to problems in the future. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ, similar to the mahar with the nikah, he said as well, that the best type of nikah is the one which is the easiest. Easiest being the least burdensome or being affordable. Now, we've talked about this before, but just like with the mahar, resentment can become an issue. Let me explain. Let's say someone ends up spending on their wedding more than what they're capable of spending. And that causes them to have uh, financial difficulty when the marriage starts or during their during their wedding or during their marriage. And then uh, because they spent so much on a single day or days if you're they see, then they may end up resenting their wife or their parents or their in-laws or whoever encourages them to spend this much uh, on their wedding. You see the problem here? Um, when it comes to our finances, Allah, we should be very, very careful. And finances can quickly become an unanticipated problem in weddings. And subhanAllah, we even know it's one of the leading causes of divorce. And by the way, the resentment is not specific to the groom. It can be felt by whoever is paying for the wedding, whether it be the parents uh, or anyone else, they may resent uh, their children or they may resent um, you know, their, their son-in-law or their daughter-in-law, whoever encourages them to spend this type of money on the wedding. Now, the point here is, Think beyond this one day. Think about how having this extravagant type of wedding may affect your heart, how it may affect your character, how it may affect your relationships, how it may affect your future, and how it may affect the barakah or blessings in your marriage. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Until next time, inshallah ta'ala, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.